my Lord, oh my God, I firmly believe that you are him, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My mother, immaculate, Saint Joseph, my father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. Well, this young lad, we can call him John, he told me that he used to go to Mass every morning at 7.30 in the chapel of his medical school. It was just a ticket, because after Mass, John had a class at 8 o'clock, and the classroom was literally a stone's throw from the chapel. But there were a couple of funny people who used to wind him up for being a good Christian. They were not bad people. They were just ignorant, silly boys who enjoyed mocking him. Hey, here comes the sacristan. Hey, how's the altar boy doing? Hey, look, the seminarian is coming. And his reaction? Well, John told me that he, he didn't even bother to bother, if you understand what I mean. John understood that those guys didn't understand. But one day, John was coming into a packed classroom. One of those two guys commented out loud for the whole class to hear. Hey, John, on Friday, we've got a party. You know, girls, alcohol. Oh, but of course, you can come because it is a sin, isn't it? And the other silly boy added scornfully. No, no, John can't come because he will be praying the rosary with the grannies from the parish. <laughs> A few students howl with laughter, while others try to stifle their guffaws. John saw that everyone was watching him. He smiled calmly and answered aloud, Well, the fact is that I can't go because this Friday I'm meeting several friends of mine to visit a nursing home. Many of the people there have no one to go and see them, so we often go to chat with them and then sing a few songs and try to give them a great time. You could hear a pin drop. So John added, Well, if any of you want, why not come and join us? Five o'clock on Friday at a school gate. That Friday, at 5 p.m., to his surprise, John found more than 20 people waiting, and most of the girls were there. So the evening party may well have had alcohol, John commented, but not many girls, because most of them decided to go and have a ball with the residents in the nursing home. Hasta la vista, baby. Jesus in this time of prayer, I ask you for the same courage that John showed so that we Christians may never hide our faith, even if someone laughs at us. You tell us, Jesus, in today's Gospel, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge before the angels of God. You see? The apostles didn't convert the entire world because they have persuasive arguments, but because they were not afraid to stand for their faith and even to give their lives for it. They laughed at you, Jesus, several times, because they said the girl was dead and you said that she was sleeping. They jeered at you, Jesus, in Herod's palace. They mocked you during your crucifixion. They laughed at the apostles on the day of Pentecost, saying that they were drunk. At times, they have probably also laughed at us for being Christians. The English Dominican friar Gerald Van, in his book The Divine Pity, wrote, When you have been shaken to the roots of your being by the mere presence of someone who stands for a truth, then you are compelled to examine the truth he stands for. Well, we stand for a person, for you, Jesus. All the saints were mocked, but they couldn't care less. St. Paul explains it very well in his letter to the Philippians. St. Paul wrote to them from prison to tell them in clear terms that he couldn't care less what they did to him. 
that the only thing that mattered to him was you, Jesus. All that he was worried about before his conversion, St. Paul explains, now didn't matter at all. He writes, For his sake I have suffered the laws of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ. What he is saying is, Frankly, my dear, I couldn't care two hoots. But I want to focus on one word, so that you can see how St. Paul uses language. The translation of this letter comes from the Greek, and the word that St. Paul uses in Greek is skubala. I consider everything skubala. Now, we, in 10 Minutes with Jesus, we are passionate about the scripture. We study it because we want to know more about it. But sometimes it is difficult to translate some words of the Bible. And this word, skubala, is translated as garbage, rubbish, and even more accurately as manure, dung. Do you understand what St. Paul is referring to? Yeah. Peter Crift explains that St. Paul was using the S word. St. Paul says that for Christ he lost all things and he considers everything as dung compared to having Christ. I don't think it's necessary to go deeper into this concept, but I think you get the point. <laughs> St. Paul couldn't care less what they did to him, or thought about him, or said about him. He had you, Jesus, and that was all he wanted. Now you see, you can boast of your knowledge of Biblical Greek, skubalon. As a Christian, you can say, I don't give a skubalon that people mock me or what people think about me. Jesus we need to ask you in this time of prayer for the courage of St. Paul so that we don't care less what people can do to us or say or think about us for following you and loving you, Jesus. All saints have been ridiculed at some point, and you and I will be too if we are good Christians. They will laugh at me and you. So what? St. Jose Maria said that once he was having a hard time at that moment, he said, it had become fashionable to insult and denigrate him in public and in private. That was coupled with the death of his mother. In a letter to his bishop, he wrote, I have no tears left to cry. The Lord has asked me for my honor and my mother. I think I have given them with all my love. At times, I can't stand it anymore. His worries and concerns kept him awake at night. Then, he explained years later, there came a time when I went to the tabernacle one night and said, Lord, and it was hard for me. It was hard for me because I am very proud. And tears were rolling down my face. Lord, if you don't need my good name, what do I want it for? And St. Jose Maria said that from then on, he was able to sleep soundly. So let's look forward to the day when you and I can say, like St. Paul, I don't give a scubalon what people do to me, or whether they mock me or treat me with scorn. If they laughed at you, Jesus, how can it surprise me that they laughed at me as well? They laughed at the apostles and the saints. And surely some jealous ladies from Nazareth laughed at our blessed mother too. So what? She couldn't care to hoots either. <laughs> My mother, may we never lack the courage to acknowledge your son before others and to stand for our faith. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.